That is the reason why, for example, there is no like direct boycotting of Amazon, even though it is on a list of pressure targets, according to the BDS list. But I am an Amazon employee. Israel could lose up to $11.5 billion a year if the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement peaks. That's if the EU legislates to boycott all Israeli goods and blocks foreign investment into the state. Is this likely to happen? Well, opinions vary. Israel's government economists say it's hard to predict, but it is possible. Foreign investment into Israel fell to around $6 billion in 2014. That's the same- Sorry, Chatter, you're better off asking a different stream, I guess. What are you saying? I'm literally going- Shut up. Take a week off. I'm literally going. I'm using this as an opportunity to both educate that chatter and anyone else who is confused about this. Same year they launched a deadly offensive on 1,462 civilians. But by 2016, that figure had doubled to almost $12 billion. What about exports? Washington-based Brookings Institute says consumer boycotts won't drastically affect Israel's economy. But data from the World Bank shows Israel's intermediate exports dropped by nearly $8 billion in that same period. Consumer boycotts work with academic and cultural boycotts. If people refuse to work with Israeli academic institutions for their involvement in, let's say, the strategies behind the use of disproportionate force against the Palestinians, or musicians refuse to perform in Israel in solidarity with the people of Gaza and the West Bank, it gets people talking. Lord Elvis Costello, Lauren Hill, they've all refused to play in Israel. And other artists are openly advocating for BDS. How can I work with any institution complicit in Israeli human rights abuses? These smaller boycotts are supposed to start a chain reaction. Sanctions is the ultimate. That's why it's BDS. S comes at the end. It's, it's no coincidence. Because you need a lot of B and D to reach the S. And it's slowly working. Companies are closing up shop in Israel. Some have been refused lucrative contracts explicitly for their involvement in Israeli occupation projects. Others are speculated to have been pressured by the BDS campaign into submission, but whatever their motives, they've divested from Israel. A UN report has also found 206 companies that are linked to illegal settlements. The company's activities range from banking and telecom to construction and tourism. Their names are being withheld until they've all been contacted. U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Nikki Haley reportedly threatened the U.N. Human Rights Council with a cut in funding if the names were to be published. South American states have also disassociated themselves. Venezuela and Bolivia have cut ties with Israel, and Brazil refused to allow former leader of the settler movement, Danny Dayan, to be Israel's ambassador in the country. The communities we established decades ago in the Jordan Valley will be here forever because they are essential for Israel's existence. BDS, more than anything, is impacting brand Israel. I'm less concerned today about any potential economic consequences. It's all about what you think of Israel. And whether you think Israelis are the good guys or the bad guys. Image on the world stage would matter to any country. It's no different for Israel. Many prominent Israelis have claimed BDS is anti-Semitic and even a threat to the existence of Israel itself. We're in the midst of an orchestrated global campaign to delegitimize Israel. Uh, Mr. Assad Abu Khalil, who he knows very well, is a leader of the BDS movement. He writes, the real aim of BDS is to bring down the state of Israel. The objectives of the BDS movement are one, the liberation and the end of this occupation. Number two, the return of refugees to their homes and to their livelihoods. Number three is the- I thought consumer side activism wasn't effective unless, un unless it's being pushed by governments. No, consumer side activism works alongside many other pressure points as long as it is directed, targeted, deliberate, and has a clear-cut goal. The goal of boycotting or divestments or demanding divestments comes along with the ultimate goal of putting sanctions, hopefully, that will cause Israel to come to terms with the cruel and uniquely evil way that they conduct their apartheid regime. Okay, it is about organizing. There's a difference between doing a general strike led by many large unions in the country that takes years and years and a shit ton of effort and a shit ton of structural support that you need to build along the way to actually successfully implement versus a general strike on Reddit. Okay, on a subreddit that decided we're going to do a general strike. Do you understand the difference?
That's why I care about the BDS movement and support the BDS movement versus criticizing decentralized uh, uh, organized movements or decentralized disorganized movements online. Okay. Although I still won't step in the way of people trying to do their, you know, try to do their best in their own unique ways. I usually don't talk about this stuff. I usually don't talk about like, you know, people getting out of hand until it becomes a point where it's like genuinely until it be until it becomes a genuine point of contention, even in this community. Okay. When you said the statement regarding consumer side activism in regards to the Hogwarts legacy shit, the next words were unlike the BDS movement. Exactly. <sighs> The end of apartheid and segregation and discrimination against Palestinians inside Israel and everywhere else. Israel has refused all three time and again. The Netanyahu government instead enacted anti-BDS legislation at home and gave covert power to the Ministry of Strategic Affairs to tackle BDS abroad. And before you say our dollars are really going to Israel regardless of whether we support these companies, it really doesn't it really does seem like every US company is involved with Israel on some level. Yes, Israel has more companies in the Nasdaq than literally India, Korea, and Japan combined. Okay, yes, and that is only more evidence that BDS has to be hyper targeted. Because if you were to technically say we're removing literally all connection from the state of Israel and any company that works with the state of Israel, it would mean just you know closing your eyes and, and not breathing. Okay, that is the reason why, for example, there is no like direct boycotting of Amazon, even though it is on a list of pressure targets, according to the BDS list. But I am an Amazon employee working on an Amazon owned platform. You guys are watching this Amazon owned platform every day, right? That's why, that's why as in terms of pressure targets, the, the Disney thing is like akin, if not, uh, way less offensive uh, than than Amazon, okay? I'm literally on Amazon every day. Why is that not a full-blown boycott target? One, because of its involvement in Israel being limited. And two, because it's it would be impossible to boycott AWS, okay? <laughs> Oops, I didn't know that. See you later. Okay. Oh my God. Oh my God. Weird, but trans take a day off. Hogwarts literally gave money directly to JK Rowling. I'm sorry, but that's ridiculous. It's sound like, seriously, I don't agree with you on this one issue. Unless I'm missing something. Can someone explain it to me? What the fuck? Just, just take 30 minutes off. Cool down a little bit. Okay. Just take 30 minutes off. Cool down. We're not going to relitigate Hogwarts legacy, which I was like objectively correct on, uh, at, from the jump. I can't believe we're still having Hogwarts legacy discourse. Still in 2024. You know your chat will get like this. I know, which is why I take the time and the effort to explain this stuff. That is my goal, is to educate people. Okay? Which is why it's so funny when people go, Hassan, classic Hassan community. It's like, dude, I spend... Every fucking day, it, I, I spend at least an hour every fucking day trying to, you know, reframe the trajectory of this goddamn community. And, and, and just like set us on the right path. And yet people still don't pay attention to me doing that and instead go, see, of course they're like this. As though I'm the one who is doing that. I rail against purity spirals on a daily fucking basis. It's so tiring. It's so tiring that I have to repeat myself all the time. And it's it, like extra annoying when outsiders look at this community and just associate someone like myself with a person who legitimately loves purity testing and purity spirals. <clears throat> Honestly, I have a chat. I just need to stop and consider, am I actually trying to provide a solution to a problem? Or am I just trying to one-up Hassan? This type of chatting isn't activism or helping anyone. Thank you.
here. This is a this is a really good post. Why is Starbucks not a boycott target? Why not boycotting everything we can? What if I already boycott these companies? Answering some of the most frequently asked questions. The BDS movement carefully evaluates and prioritizes targeted companies based on the level of their complicity in Israel's violation of Palestinian rights, among other targeting criteria. This process, uh, this process involves rigorous research and consultation with partners to ensure that our boycotts are impactful. The B and BDS is all about collective strategic targeting of one of the most of all the most complicit companies and institutions. While boycotting a particular company such as Starbucks or Zara may be justified for various reasons, it might not meet the specific BDS criteria or have that same level of longer-term impact on the ground as targeting companies which are currently among our priority boycott targets. It is also important to note that the landscape of corporate complicity is constantly evolving. If new information comes to light indicating that the company is significantly contributing to Israel's genocide or as a regime of settler colonial apartheid, we will consider prioritizing it. In the meantime, we boycott... What? In the meantime, we encourage people to remain engaged and informed about the broader Palestinian-led BDS movement and to support our existing campaigns, which are designed to address the most egregious violators, impose on them a hefty cost, and force them to end their complicity. What's wrong with going beyond BDS targets and boycotting all companies complicit in Israeli crimes? The passionate commitment to justice behind the will <coughs> to boycott every company that's complicit with the genocidal Israeli regime are commendable, and we understand that many people wish to make informed and ethical decisions as individual consumers. But to be effective, our efforts must be collective. The BDS movement strategically focus on a small number of targets to mobilize mass pressure against them, ensuring that our efforts are impactful. By forcing a strategic target to end complicity, we teach many other complicit companies a lesson. That's why, for example, even though it was like relatively decentralized, the Bud Light boycott campaign technically worked because conservatives lasered in on one company. You know what's ironic? At the time... Matt Walsh literally said basically this about Bud Light. Matt Walsh said this exact same shit. He was like, we only go after one company and not all of these other companies. And we, you know, I, I admire the, the intensity and, and uh, people trying to fucking uh, apply pressure to all these other companies. But it's good to just have a larger impact by focusing our efforts on one product or one company. He was right. Strategic focus. The BDS targets are curated to include companies and institutions that are directly and significantly complicit in Israel's violation of Palestinian rights and against which we can actually win. Sustainability. Maintaining focused boycotts ensures that individuals and communities can sustain their participation and escalate pressure as needed until the objectives are met. Clarity and coherence. The BDS list of boycott targets provides clear and coherent, morally consistent guidelines for action, making it easier for supporters to understand and participate in the movement. Building alliances. The BDS movement works in solidarity with a wide range of partners and justice movements who support our strategic campaigns. By sticking to a concise number of targets, we can maintain strong alliances and coordinate our efforts, which are crucial for achieving our goals. Effectiveness. Targeted boycotts give us collective leverage to push for specific changes and hold entities accountable in a way that broad, unfocused boycotts cannot. So if you must boycott a long list of companies, we ask that you always prioritize BDS companies. Why not focus more on companies whose products many people consume daily, like food and beverages, instead of companies like Intel and Chevron? The BDS movement, which, by the way, struck a significant W with Intel. Intel refused to open up their $25 billion uh, factory in Israel as a consequence of this. Okay. The BDS movement targets companies like Intel and Chevron because of their direct and significant involvement sustaining... Dude, if, if one more Turkish chatter asks me this Kuzegune shit, I'm going to fucking lose it. I don't know what it is. People keep coming in here and constantly asking this. I don't know why. Okay. Targeting such companies creates substantial pressure for corporate accountability and draws significant media attention, amplifying the impact of our campaigns. This approach ensures that our efforts are focused on entities that directly support Israel's human rights violations. While everyday consumer goods companies are on our list, McDonald's and Pizza Hut, for instance, prioritizing the most complicit companies maximize their impact in isolating apartheid Israel globally. Short summary of what I assume they're asking a guy who debated a pro Sharia guy on YouTube and now has an arrest warrant for him in Turkey, but he is not in Turkey and says he won't come back. That's it? I don't know what that is. 
BDS is a purity spiral. Far too complicated for the average person to understand. Let's be for fucking real, man. No, BDS is the bare minimum. You're insane. And it is also ultimately a successful movement. It has been a successful movement in the past against apartheid South Africa. So yes, if you think that BDS is a purity spiral, unless you're trying to fucking do a... I'm, I'm putting a fucking boycott on the top of the hour ad break debates from chatters. Okay, in the middle of like me trying to educate people, uh, I'm putting a boycott on that chatter thinking that that's a valuable way to, to debate me at the top of the hour when there's a three minute ad break coming up. Maybe we do need to have the conversation if it wasn't a bait. No, I think that was a bait. All everyday consumer goods and pizza comp, uh, we encourage everyone to support these strategic campaigns to help dismantle Israel's old, decades old regime, settler colonial state, and apartheid. Why is Puma? Still a boycott target despite announcing it will renew his contract with the Israeli Football Association. Puma remains on the BDS boycott list because despite announcing it, it will now renew its kit supply contract with the IFA. The sponsorship contact remains uh, contract remains valid until the end of the year. Um, yeah, participate in the campaigns, advocate for divestment, spread awareness if you already boycott these companies, and continue contacting the companies and stay informed. All companies under capitalism are obviously engaging in unethical practices in one way shape or form if you are an anti-capitalist you have to recognize that reality that is why instead of me instead of saying like i will not consume any capitalist corporation's product and then like living in the fucking mountains myself okay uh i try to do my very best to create pressure targets pressure points focus on unionization rather than sitting around and hoping that like magically capitalism will perish Sometimes you have to be targeted in order to be effective. Now target your efforts on securing a subscription at the top of the hour because the three minute ad break is upon us. That's why you buy million dollar house. No, I buy million dollar house because I live in a place where only million dollar house exists and I have the money to buy million dollar house. Okay. I don't buy million dollar house to rent it out. If I buy million dollar house to rent, then, you know, we can have a different conversation. I want to see you do a Mr. Beast style video where you try and buy a house in LA for under a mil. Yeah, so I can get fucking ass blasted again. Always the house. No, the other thing, the other one, the, the real one is, is supposed to be the Porsche. You're supposed to say you have Porsche. You have Gucci shirt. Those are definitely way worse uh, purchases than the house for me and my family. Um, yeah, those are impulse purchases. I am, you know, I have never been a person that uh, is, is living this like Spartan lifestyle. I never claim to be. The take on his dog should compare to the Tessie. No, Teslas are awful. Lowe's education chat has all this energy for the house discourse without understanding it, but probably think furries flexing their five figure fur suits and expensive commission Volpera sex art and call it authentic representation of the working class like Starbucks. We see how, wait, what? But what is more peak capitalism than buying all these luxury goods, which are built upon the exploitation? Oh, you fucking missed it. Chatter was trying to debate me. Why are you, why are you banning? Why are you banning smart chatters? who are trying to fucking relitigate house discourse, dude. In car discourse. No, dude. It is perfectly valid in every sense of the word. And I have always advocated for people to want to get nice things for themselves. Okay? The world, ultimately, is gruesome and awful. I think people genuinely misunderstand the major reasons for why I advocate for the things I advocate for in terms of more autonomy, in terms of more individual liberties, it is so that you can have more money, more disposable income in the short term so that you can also engage in idiotic purchases if it makes you feel good. 
I have never had an issue with commodity consumption. I will never have an issue with commodity consumption. I am not a degrowth style uh, anti-capitalist. I personally have always, regardless of how fucking broke I was, have always said these exact same things. There's a conversation that I had with Philosophy Tube way back in the day where I specifically talked about the most successful uh, neoliberal mechanisms of control. Commodity purchases, especially stupid ones, have a, a you know, way to dull people's sensibilities. And I think that's a, if there is always going to be some kind of control that needs to be instilled upon a population so they fucking rise up, then I would rather have that be done in that way than a more authoritarian way of doing things. Okay? Socialism is not a poverty cult. It has never been a poverty cult. It is actually anti-socialists who have presented socialism as a poverty cult. And many people, many people personally subscribe to that notion even if they themselves believe to be they themselves think that they are a genuine anti-capitalist it is liberalism that makes you feel this way okay stick so seething at carrot chads yes At the end of the day, it is not the boss that makes the things that you purchase and consume and use like the iPhone. It is the workers that made the iPhone. The iPhone or some form of the iPhone, even if it's not called the iPhone, would still exist under other organizations of the economy. After all, the USSR literally played a fundamental role in the development of all of the technologies that we currently take advantage of. Cell phone. Okay? Working a job to buy a car to drive her to a to drive to a job is a poverty cult. Yeah. Uh. Man, I love a song. It makes me feel normal. He's so great. Yes. I try. They successfully lobbied a number of U.S. states to punish the... Okay, we're done with the BDS side of this conversation. Let's get back to... Um, I don't know if I want to listen 